We'll have a little lesson and discussion on this piece now. Uh, follow the lesson for free and pick up some tips about this music and this style. Uh, but if you're interested, I do have a sheet music edition of this work, and there's a link for that in the description. This comes from my Gaspar Sands Volume 2 collection, which is six works that I've collected into a single uh, uh, edition, so you can check that out. Um, really nice pieces, a little bit lesser known than some of the other ones that are, that are often played by Sands. So um, I think in this particular piece, um, there's a couple of things to discuss just about how to handle the texture of the music. So we'll talk about that. Um, we'll have a walkthrough of the piece and we'll also discuss the ornamentation in, in this piece that I'm using anyway. So this isn't just an intermediate level piece. Um, when you add lots of ornamentation to it, it can be a little bit challenging. And if you're trying to get like that perfect texture and that perfect dance feel and that perfect sound, then of course it can be as difficult as you want it to be. But in terms of playing, it's relatively straightforward. A um, little bit of upper position work, but you know, even if you left out some of the trills, you might find it quite a bit easier to play. One thing to really focus on in this piece is, of course, the melody and, you know, bringing out all the melodic lines, but it's also that light texture and the dance feel, you know, going just fast enough that, that you can really just feel the music as one beat per bar for the most part, even though it's kind of like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, but instead of feeling that, it's really just here, here. You're just feeling it pretty much just one beat per, per measure so keeping that beat really simple keeping the texture light gives this piece quite a bit of, of charm in terms of the texture of the piece uh, like I said in in the other videos for this collection um, I'm going for a little bit lighter of a texture uh, some of the arrangements of Sans's music um, they beef up the music a lot and make it really Spanish and romantic kind of in in era but this is Baroque guitar music, originally for Baroque guitar, which is, is quite a light instrument, slightly different tuning. This particular work works out really well on the modern guitar. There's not much arranging process that, that really has to happen. Um, but nevertheless, I've tried to keep the texture as the original kind of a little bit lighter. And I think when you, when you lighten up the sound of the music, rather than like really really digging in or something like that, I think it adds quite a bit of charm and keeps some of that light um, original intention. It also makes sense of the, you know, there's so much ornamentation of these trills in this particular piece that um, the lighter it is, the more decorative it sounds and um, the trills could be almost obnoxious if it was like a big heavy ones, right? So it's, it's very light and not delicate because it's still dancey, right? But, but it has a texture that isn't, isn't heavy. This piece is, is very melodic though, so, so, you know, when you're playing it, I think that actually that C is the melody. So make sure you practice the melody on its own and just and get really comfortable with that. There's a couple of little exchanges in that second part, like the bass gets active and then the top part. It's, it's mainly an upper voice melody in this particular work, but you can look for some of those exchanges. I think what we'll do now is let's do a walkthrough of the piece, and uh, I won't. I'll discuss the ornaments after the walkthrough. So we're starting in second position. In there we'll move on a little bit of a of a you know if you're more on the beginner side um, tiny stretch here but like just make sure your hand is aligned and it's quite straightforward and then the last section Maybe it's a, a little bit challenging, but really once you get to know the notes and you are secure on those first, on the shapes that occur on the first beat of each measure, it's not that difficult. You just have to make sure you're secure with those shapes. So this one. So 
So just making sure that each downbeat, that you know the shape, like this shape, this shape, this shape, this shape. You know, just as long as you're really comfortable with that, then adding the rest of the notes is it's just, again, if you have a light texture, your security comes from on those shapes. And then you just carry on. I use 4-2 here. Uh, just remember, have your hand aligned so you can reach that, that C sharp easily. If I'm even slightly misaligned, I can't even reach that string. But if I, if I bring that knuckle in, align my hand, it's no problem at all. Leaving 1 and 4 available for the next measure. Now let's just quickly discuss the ornamentation of this work. Um, so all of the all of the trills in my edition that you see are from the original. The ones in parentheses are editorial, so you could add those on repeats, or you can add them or leave them out. It's totally up to you. I just wanted to make sure that you know what was in the original and what was what I added. So all ornaments in parentheses are editorial. The majority of trills in this particular piece, uh, they're not cadential trills, you know, they're happening at the beginning or the middle of the phrase, and I would do all, almost all of them from the written note to the upper note to the back to the written note. So just hammer on, pull off. Um, lots of evidence uh, and, you know, academic evidence that that's how they played their trills. That said, um, they would have been listening to both, and I think at certain situations it's okay to trill from the upper note, especially if it's near a cadence. That doesn't happen much in this particular piece. But there is one that I use um, where I play the upper auxiliary first, and I'll cover that when I get to it. So this one is a trill on the C, so C, D, C. F to G, F sharp to G. Again, C to D. On the repeat, I do a mordant, so A, G sharp, A, just for some decoration. The vibrato markings in his original tablature is like this little double um, number sign or double cross. Um, I just have written VIB for a vibrato um, abbreviation. Probably in the Baroque era on Baroque guitar, the vibrato was like an ornament. It was almost like a modulation of the sound, like a trill. Um, on the modern guitar, I really think that has varied effects, so you can either just leave it out completely, or you can observe it. I do a very subtle, just a little bit of vibrato there. Uh, I, I almost don't observe them, but feel free to experiment with that. On the repeat, I do all these extra trills. Um, actually, sometimes on measure 12, I actually, I will start on the upper auxiliary. The reason I do that there is the measure before ends on a D, which allows, allows that to be a suspension over the bar, meaning that the D ends up being on the beat as if it has been elongated from the measure before. It's called a suspension in music theory. Um, so I, I, I go D, C, D, C. That's an option there. You could still just play it from the written note if you prefer. Um, sometimes when in the note before allows for that suspension, I will do it from the upper auxiliary, the upper note. That last section from measure 17. So that's just a, you know, C, D, C. G sharp, A. I do just a E, F, E, but uh, feel free to, to do a suspension with the F sharp, so starting on the F sharp there, if you wish. It's mid-phrase though, so I could go either way. Um, I'm, I usually just, for this particular music, I'll decorate just from the written note because it's just mid-phrase. I'm not cadencing. I'm not trying to add tension to the music. The only 
other comments I'll say is in measure 15, um, the G sharp in the bass is an editorial addition, um, and which also causes me to raise the A in the next measure up an octave. The the way it's originally written just it didn't work with that bass line, so I'm just completing that logical bass line. Because of the tuning of the broke guitar, I've just changed it just a touch there. So added that G in the bass, and then um, the A in the next measure, I've just raised up an octave so that it's all part of that. All part of that same bass line there, just to make it logical on the modern, on the modern classical guitar, where the voice leading seems to come out... Um, in a more finicky way. So I, I think it just sounds much more natural that way. In measure 19, um, the original clearly indicates a fourth string D in the lower voice, um, and that's what I played, and that's what's in my edition. Um, and, and most of the other editions that I've seen also just use what's in the original, a D in the bass in measure 19 there. On the modern guitar, um, it's, it's unclear if maybe, I mean, the harmony sounds a little bit funny. <laughs> It sounds fine in the context of the dance feel of the piece. That said, um, you could change it to an E, um, an E on the fourth string, or an open E actually would work just fine. Making it, you know, an E major harmony. So feel free to change that if you want. I've stayed with the original. It sounds fine with the dance, and I think maybe it just fits, fits what he does often in his music, but I'll leave that one up to you. So charming little piece again, nice dance feel, beautiful little melodies and some ornamentation that make it a little bit decorative. So it's just another great little, little piece by Sands.